This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is The Ramble. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no one we'd much rather talk to than Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Yes, Alex. I, uh, you'd love to talk to me because I always have a positive message. Well, uh, yes, I go to you for good news. <laughs> uh, but you had some, not good news, but better than anticipated news right yes i I had my surgery canceled had his surgery canceled he didn't qualify for the surgery no uh uh uh, he was supposed you were supposed to get a hernia operation uh yes a couple Uh, days ago let me let me let me just uh tell people that this is really sucks okay because everybody i know is having hernia operations, or uh, Will Durst is in uh, is uh, is had a stroke and is still in a hospital bed after two he and a half years. A, he just had a hip surgery, or yeah. hip replacement. Uh, Steve Kravitz had all his, a lot of his teeth replaced. Okay, oh, really? Yeah, wow. and uh, 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 he you know he has his problems, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I'd been doing this interview. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, none of this would come up. Not, no. You know, no, there were no hernia operations in our future. You know, if we did, it was because we were working at some, you know, place where we were lifting a lot of stuff, and all of a sudden we got a hernia, you know. But he, here it's like, oh, Bubs has to have his hernia operation. I hope he's going to be okay, you know. And the yeah, recovery on that's that. pretty long, isn't it? It's like six weeks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, six weeks of what? Not doing anything, right? Pretty much, yeah. No, no physical activity. Which... Oh well, maybe Bubs will get fat. I'll get fat. Yeah, I will. And uh... did you ever have a time when you were fat? Uh, when I was in high school, I was very fat. That's why I really? always have this. Uh, I almost have like a woman's approach to my body about not getting fat. I just dread it. Really? You know, I've yeah, had my fat I, periods. I've had my, I, I, a while back, lost 60 pounds uh, dieting. And then I went and I had this, you know, this uh, all this radiation and surgery and stuff uh, for the prostate cancer, and I gained about 30 pounds. Uh, and uh, because of, of medication, things like that, you know. Yeah, it used to be. I had never thought you as being overweight, but I remember you always obsessed about your weight when I first met y- you. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm I've gained a little bit of it back. I have a little bit of a pot belly now again, uh, which bothers me because I lost all that weight and I felt really good about it. And then I went and had this uh, this the, this radiation and all this other crap, and uh, it 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 does take that effect on you. You know, so, uh, but uh, but uh, so the hernia operation has been moved to when? Uh, no specific date. They said uh, they said it could be September. It might be November. Well, uh, you know, here's my good news on that end. Okay, and I I don't have it right here with me, um, but I um, I I went to the emergency room the other day for. We don't know what, okay? All I know is I woke up in the middle of the night. People have heard this before, but I'm just repeating it for you. Four o'clock in the morning, I suddenly start feeling like I have to throw up horribly. And I get up, I, and I'm, I'm so dizzy, and I'm so out of it that I, if and whenever I get up, I really had to hurl. So I laid back, and I laid in bed for a while, and then I said, I got to get to the bathroom and just get rid of whatever this is. So I walk into the ba- stumble into the bathroom, literally stumble, holding onto the walls, and I walk over to the sink to throw up in it, and I hit my head on the sink, oh, and, and yeah. I fall back on the floor, and I'm lying there on my back, and I 
think, okay, I'll try to get up. And every time I try to get up, I'm really dizzy and I want to throw up. One thing leads to another, ambulance, emergency room, every test known to mankind, right? Every inch of my body. I think the only thing they didn't do was stick a finger up my ass, okay? <laughs> every Two CT scans, not one, two. One for above the neck, then they found some enlarged lymph nodes. They wanted to make sure I didn't have cancer anywhere in my body, so they did the rest of my body, and in that, they find the hernia. Really? <laughs> and it says, hernia not obstructed. That's good news. That's great news, yeah. Yeah, so I know my hernia isn't a problem. But yours was kind of obstructed in a way, and you were getting all kinds of pains and it's everything. Getting, it's not obstructed, but it's getting painful and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, so I... But uh, what they did find were the lymph nodes, so now i got to go to my doctor and make sure that they're enlarged. It only I mean, I figure they're enlarged because I, I literally, when I was in bed, I left the sheets wet, not with urine or anything like that. I sweated. I mean, I was sweating like crazy. And then Marjorie said when they, the uh, emergency people picked me up from the floor of the bathroom, it was soaked you know, wow. because I had sweated so much. And we figure it was food poisoning from steak, uh, from uh, tuna tartare I had had the night before. Sounds like it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so that that was my uh, that was my big uh, my big deal. You know, uh, uh, and uh, I uh, I don't know I don't know what it is, but anyway, it's also left me a little weak. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, sounds to me like I had a, like a. Uh, vertigo. It was just very similar symptoms. Where I, if I got up, I felt like I was going to throw up, and the room was spinning. And yeah. Well, what did you do in that case? Threw up. Uh, I called the emergency room, and they just said that it's probably vertigo, and they just said it'll go away in a yeah a few hours, and it did. And it did. Yeah. They, I, yeah. they, they had to give me uh, pills. I mean. It, this I thank God I'm fully insured. You know, one of those insurance plans where Medicare pays this, they pay that. I don't owe nothing. Okay, but I'm think I'm trying to figure out how much that hospital visit cost. And oh, we're I figuring would guess. E, e, emergency room easily twenty grand. That's easily. what we're that's what we're thinking twenty grand. You know, of course, they're not going to get that much because Medicare will go, uh-uh, we're not paying for, you know, uh, aspirin at uh, $20 a pill. Yeah. How come we can't do that like the insurance companies? No, we're, gonna, we're not going to pay that. Yeah, we're not going to pay that. This Here's what we'll pay. This is what it's worth, you know. That's what we should do. Absolutely. But anyway, so I, since then I've been feeling like really like I have a hard time walking down the street because I'm, Lightheaded, you know, and it 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 really threw me off. Whatever it was, um, but uh, well, and then they found a couple of spots on my lungs, which are nodes, which are one to two centimeters wide, which is considered not dangerous. Nodes in the lungs are very common. You know, you can get an infection, you know, cold, really bad cold infection in your lungs that might leave one of these spots behind. One of them is they saw on a C- CT scan about six years ago, and it has not changed in size. So that's perfect on that one. And the other one was a kind that just doesn't usually become cancer. So uh, I think we're fine on that level. And then my doc got to go to my doctor Monday and have him check my uh, my lymph nodes, you know, or send me to a lymph node doctor. You know, they then refer you to somebody who can get more money. It's just one big money pit, you know. Um, that's but why they don't know what uh, caused the original dizziness. Oh, well, here's what happens. You go there, you know, and you say, they say, well, what, what could be causing this? And you're in a daze. You know, I was in a daze probably for, I was there for 14 hours, by the way. Uh, I was in a daze, just complete daze. And I said, well, last night I had steak tartare. And I don't throw up, okay? I'm just, I will do everything I can not to throw up. And uh, I i had steak tartare last night, and I think that's what caused it. 
And then the woman there, who is not the not the doctor. I saw the doctor for about a minute and a half. Okay. Then I'm turned over to this uh, physician's assistant, a PA. She can like you know write prescriptions and can do everything. She can read notes and blah 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 and send you off to have stuff done and so on. But that's the person I had, and she's going. Well, maybe it was something in your spine or this or that. You know, I went. It's the tartar, you know, and she's not even pay, <laughs> she's not even paying attention to that. No, no. She has this whole idea of what she wants it to be. All right. So now I'm being sent at my heart. They did an echocardiogram on my heart. Jesus. Uh, not the short one my doctor does at my doctor's office because he is a you know a, a a heart doctor, a cardiologist. Um, but um, they did like a, a 25 minute version of it and she came out I said how's my heart she says your heart's fine you know okay well we've just found that out and then they did the upper toe, ch- uh, head and, and neck for a CT scan then they sent me back in for the rest of the body CT scan then they did my blood draw then they did my urine test they did a COVID test uh, I'm trying to think of what else they did. They just did tons of different things, you know. Sounds like you got a complete physical. I not, not only a complete physical, a super physical. Okay, the, your doctor, when he does a physical on you, it doesn't go like this. Okay, he doesn't come back with as much information on you. You know. So anyway, that that's my story. You well, know. That's- uh, and it, getting up in the middle of the night going to the hospital that would wipe me out for about five days I think well I think that whole trip had some kind of really deleterious effect on me you know I take this pill called pregabalin which is a for the neuropathy and it does make you dizzy and lightheaded but I think it's affecting me more than it used to uh, because it's it's you know it's uh, it's uh, um, and put it it's uh, you know yeah. Uh, well, whatever it is, it it it, it I think is being enhanced by the fact that my body is weak on some level for what happened last week. But you know, then they said, "Oh, here's the best part." They said, uh, the, "This this uh, physician's assistant says, uh, here's the I want you to go see what you should for the lymph nodes. Go see a hematologist slash oncologist." And I went, what? I don't have cancer. But all these hematologists are hematologists slash oncologists. Mm -hmm. Well, can't you send me to one that's just a hematologist? Because I don't like going to an oncologist because he's looking for more money for you to have cancer. Anyway. Yeah, they're looking for it. Well, it's like I felt like I was spending uh, 14 hours in the emergency room while they were mining for gold. Okay. (laughs) So anyway, she says, uh, go so go over to these people, make an appointment, you go see them. Okay, so I call them, and they say, well, we have to ask the doctors to look at your records first to decide if we'll take you. And I'm going, what am I doing, trying to get into Harvard here? You know? Uh, and and um, I said, okay, I'm not trying to get into Harvard. Uh, I'm just trying to get a doctor. Remember the old days where you, you called up a place and you said, I want an appointment with a doctor, a hematologist, to see me. And they go, what time can you be here? You remember those days? Yeah, that, was, uh, that couldn't have lasted, though, because that was too simple. Yeah, but now, so, so then they call me back in two days, and they tell me, uh, you're, uh, uh, we looked at your blood work, because that's what hematologists do, and your blood is perfect, or it's not, not a problem. There's nothing there that we can deal with. We're on hematologist slash oncologist, right? We can't do anything. Go to your, uh, your your regular physician. And then the woman said, and get a biopsy. And I went, a, a biopsy on what? And she said, I don't know. Your doctor will call you. <laughs> what doctor? The doctor from the emergency room. Well, she never called. So I called back to this woman. And I said, what was that whole thing about a biopsy? And she said, I don't think I said that. All you have to do is go to your primary care physician, have him check this out. So I'm going, geez, you know, all I want is somebody to just look at these lymph nodes and who knows what they're doing. You know, and my primary care physician will give me, you know, feel for the lymph nodes, but I don't know if he'll be the person who can do lymph node stuff. And uh, I'm going, I just, why, why can't I get a doctor? So I finally made an appointment with my 
um, uh, primary care physician, which is now called a PCP. Call your yeah. PCP. Oh, really? Why? For your HD and your MLN and your QRSTUVs. Everything's got an initial now. Did you, did you notice on television when they do these ads for really disgusting diseases, they just give initials on yeah. the ads <laughs> on television? You know, so I, and I don't, we, Marjorie and I look at each other, we're watching all these ads because we watch them on the 630 News, which is just nothing but one pill ad after another, all right? And we're looking at each other saying, what's this ad for? What is that? What is PCMP? What's QRS? You know, we, we, we have no idea what these things are. And it wasn't that long ago when the, they weren't even allowed to advertise. Well, that's true, too. Uh, they and lawyers couldn't advertise or wouldn't advertise, and now they'd advertise too. So, you know, uh, you better call Saul. Anyway, uh, they advertise too, and um, I, it's just, I don't know. I mean, is medicine better than it was? I don't think so. I think they're making up diseases and coming up with pills well, for that made-up disease. Well, you know, I mean, we do have medication that takes care of stuff, but it, all of them have side effects. I mean, if you watch TV about these pills and the ads, they they're five, they take 10 seconds to tell you what the pill is and how it'll help you, and then the other 50 seconds are, is a disclaimer, you know, like uh, don't take... Uh, Gabalin, if you blah blah blah, and you blah blah blah, and you have diarrhea, and you're you're th- you know whatever. So, you know. well, yeah, and it used to be like uh, when they invented penicillin, it's one shot and you were cured. Now the medicines, it's not you don't take the medicine you're cured. You take that medicine forever. You, you yeah, you got a great point there. And sometimes the medicine, like for instance, this pregabalin affects me and I'm really you know I'm right now I'm a little do I sound loopy no no I sound fine but I feel loopy okay and also it is hard for me to concentrate on certain things because of this pill and it makes no sense that it's that that way you know but they all have these side effects they all have these side effects and when you get as you get older you'll find this out they'll give you anything you know, oh hey, you want heroin? Here, have it. You know, you're you're not, you're 82 years old. How much longer are you going to live? So what if you're an addict for the rest of your life? You know, well, I'd like to lead, lead the you know the rest of my life. I I'd like to lead it pain free if possible, but if not, I'd like to have my wits about me. But it, oh, my I'm, my head's foggy all the time. You know, so nope. these I know some people that take uh, 20 pills a day. Oh, I take I take. I take six. Okay, I take a blood pressure pill. Let's let's. Well, what is it? Our, we have a friend named Paula. She says whenever I get together with the girls, we sit down and talk. And what it is is an organ recital. You know, she says we're. I, I've got this, and my doctor told me I have that. And I'm taking this pill, and I'm taking that pill. And really, what life becomes is an organ recital. Uh, <laughs> You know, so I mean, um, see there, I just forgot where I was. Oh well, that happens to all of us. Uh, but you know, so it, it, it's it, it, it's not fun getting older. And as you get older, they also do one other thing. If I go to the emergency room and I'm 20 years old and I was lying on my back and I had hurled and I couldn't get up and whatever, they would go, "Okay, well, let's see here. Okay, you're fine. Go home." But when you're 82, they just put you through every test known to mankind. They just cha- the whole thing changes, you know. If you get a uh, if if you you're having trouble urinating at night, well, and you're 20, can't be prostate cancer, so it's probably something else. Mm-hmm. But if you're 82, they go, well, it could be prostate cancer. Let's do this test. Let's do that test. Let's do a biopsy. Blah, 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 blah. It's you know you, you spend your later years being probed and prodded and i just as soon not do that i'm sure you feel the same way about this hernia yeah and like you said like 30 years ago when we weren't leaving living the healthiest life uh we didn't have any of these problems well you know something i'll tell you with your hernia for instance 
I, 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 somebody said to me, well you, well, you should get that operated on or something like that because it's not small, okay? And I went, no. And the reason is I don't want uh, folks to, be, to have to have my body opened up. No. Because right now, I've lived 82 years, and this body is hermetically sealed. <laughs> All right? It's hermetically sealed. It has never been opened up. Nothing has gotten into the air. Uh, and, and, and I like it that way. Yeah. You, you know, because I think I'm healthier if it is that way. But if they're going to start opening it up, and they're going to start doing this, and they're going to start doing that, and they're chopping away at me, you know, like... You know, you're going to get that hernia operation. Your hermetic hermetic ceiling is gone. I know. You know, so. And then, of course, I face death. That's the other thing. Bob. Well, as, uh, I just heard uh, David Letterman said when he hit 70, he just became obsessed with death. <laughs> really? Where did he say yeah. that? Where, I didn't see that. Wow. I saw it on, uh, where did I see that? I read it maybe online or something. I think about I think, it all the time, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I'm thinking, why did he wait till 70? But um, Well, you've always had a fear of death, right? Oh, since I was a kid, yeah. More, morbid. I have a morbid fear of death. I mean, I think about it. I wake up thinking about it, you know, because it, it's, it's uh, uh -oh, death is sitting over my shoulder with his scythe, you know. Just saying. Well, weren't you? You must have been terrified when you were going through your ordeal last week. I'll tell you what I was thinking. I was lying on the floor, on my back, nauseous, dizzy, out of it. And I said, is this it? Wow. You know, is this the end? And then the next thought that hit me, and you're going to love this one, I said, please don't let me go like Elvis and Lenny Bruce. <laughs> the you know, I can see Alex Bennett dead, found in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, that was my biggest fear at that point. But I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine. I still couldn't imagine death being very easy. They say that when you die, there's a theory that when you die, you're still awake for about ten minutes or something. You're dead, but you're. Your, your, your processes haven't stopped. I just saw that the, it's seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah. That must be the worst seven minutes of your life. <laughs> or maybe, Shutting, maybe, maybe. You, down. <laughs> who knows? Maybe you get laid during those seven minutes. I don't know. You know. Do you believe in the hereafter at all? Uh, no, unfortunately. I think that's why we have a fear of death. I, I'm really jealous of these religious people who go, well, I'm going to go see Aunt Minnie, and I'm going to see God. And I go, yeah, that's fine. It's great. I'm glad you feel that way because that, that does away with your fear of death. I that's have why we have religion, right? Yeah, that's why. Right, yes. But the thing is that they believe in that, and they then don't fear death on any level. Marjorie, my wife, does not fear death at all. Wow. In fact, she says, I hope I go soon because I've got too many you know, broken bones and ailments and things like that, you know, because she's got a lot of bone problems, you know. Um, uh, and, and uh, it, uh, you know, she, she, she goes, I wish I'd go tomorrow. I, I, I death will be really? welcome. Really? Yeah, and I'm going, come on, you know. I mean, uh, granted, we're not having that much fun right now in this existence, you know, but... Uh, hell, you know, I just, I just, I just can't imagine it, you know. Yeah, W. C. Field just said we passed through this way just once. So. Yes, that's right. Well, I can't imagine the world going on without me. And then I had this theory <laughs> that this, in some ways, is all an illusion. Okay, and when I die, the rest of the world disappears. Does that sound? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Huh? You know, yeah. in other words, I'm taking it with me. Yeah. You know, and and uh, everybody will cease to be, at least in my world. Now, I don't know what kind of feeling I have later on, you know. I mean, I do believe in science, and I think there are some things in science that say that, well, maybe it won't be that bad, you know, uh, and uh, it'll, it'll take care of itself. But I don't know. I don't know. 
Are we depressing you folks? Huh? <laughs> How many of you want to slice your wrist right now listening to Alex and Larry? Well, if you're enjoying it, tune in next week because it'll be just as bad. <laughs> depressing. Just as depressing. Anyway, hey, Bubs, thanks. Yes, sir. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Anytime. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, thanks to Bubbles. And uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get my microphone up. Let me see here. Let me get it right. There we go. It's up. It's up a bit more than it was. Okay. All righty. Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, and uh, we're uh, going to be taking some calls in a few moments. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I had a little problem. I think at the beginning of the show, I had my, my feed of just this camera on. Hi. How are you? How you doing? Uh, I, today I, I tried um, uh, something Marjorie suggested this and then yesterday um, what's his name Jeff said uh, yeah I do it and it's great you know and you know I've been telling you I've been tired and uh, lightheaded and all of that and I'm still that way but I they said uh, take um, uh, take uh, what do you call it uh, electrolytes so I sent away for some electrolyte stuff and I had electrolytes and I had two glasses of electrolytes today and I'm feeling a little more energetic you know not feeling as uh, as tired and as as, as, as uh, off in the la la land yeah, right anyway so if any of you go to watch my opening tonight watch the uh, what do you call it the um, uh, the uh, you know the live feed at the beginning of the show it looks like I may have had my camera this camera open while I was doing that as opposed to the the uh, transition we normally have which is is that okay but you know uh, I, I I'm slowly I'm getting used to making this whole new system work it's not that new it's just I got a new machine I gotta tell you this machine I got this is this uh, Apple uh, it's it's called an Apple um, studio Mac studio uh, Apple studio I guess and uh, it is I think the most phenomenal computer I've ever owned it really is incredible so anyway uh, I don't know what to do anyway I'm, 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 I'm trying to hide the bottom of my mouth do you notice I have crooked teeth here uh, I've always had crooked teeth and that little gray spot there isn't brown it's like shadow because I have a tooth that sticks out here. I've had this all my life. My parents, when I was a kid, my parents uh, went to a dentist who said, looked at it and said, well, yeah, it's crooked teeth. And he said, just have them pull on all the time and it'll, it'll go away. He didn't say go get braces or anything like that, so I never got braces. So I've always had that, but I hope you don't notice it that much. How noticeable is it? Why is it at this age I'm even worried about whether it's noticeable or not? You know, at this age I look like an old hag anyway. So you know. But anyway, so uh, so that the uh, it was my parents' cheap way of not having to <laughs> take me to a dentist. So here's what happened this morning. Let me tell you this before we go to our our phones and we have I have a couple of people waiting right now uh, I uh, and you're gonna love this uh, Marjorie wakes up all in the middle of the night I hear her coughing like crazy and then she wakes up uh, I, I wake up at oh I don't know nine o'clock this morning and she says I've been coughing all night and I went oh my god I bet you maybe she has COVID you know could be so we, we have these COVID tests, the ones the government sent and also some that, that uh, Marjorie bought, okay, for about 40 bucks. So anyway, I, uh, um, I figure, well, let's give you a COVID test. So I pull the stuff out. And if you've never done this before, it, it's not easy to get the idea of how it works. If it, once you do it once, you could do, do it a thousand times. 
but first you've got to pull out the you got to pull out all the pieces. One is the swab, of course, and then the other is the uh, the the actual stick that that tells you whether you got COVID or not. And then there's this um, a little vial, and then a top to the vial. And so now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take it and swab it five times in one nostril, five times in another nostril, then drop a uh, drop it into this liquid. Now in one version of it. It already had the liquid in there. In the other version, you had to open it up and pour the liquid in there. And then you drop in the, um, the thing and swirl it around uh, for, I think, 10 times or something like that, right, in this uh, solution. And then you have to grab a hold of it. See, this is first time you do this. It's like, what do I do? How do I do this? Now, and then you squeeze it, okay? So then when you extract the, uh, the uh, thing, you swab it in your nose, uh, you're you're kind of like um, squeezing out all the stuff into the liquid. Okay, then you got this top you have to screw on. Okay, and then then oh yeah I love this. Then you got to pour four drops or three drops in one thing and four drops in the or on the other kit. There are two different kits that we had here. And um, and then you wait 15 minutes. And if uh, the one line that says C comes up, you don't have COVID. If both the C and the a T line, I think, come up, well, go buy a bag, uh, you know, bushel of tissues because you're going to be sick. All right. So I we we I we do those, and she comes up negative. Well, we're not sure that we did it right. Okay, so we tried it one more time. And we tried it with the other kit, and she came out negative again. So we assume she's negative. So she, but she's got a cough, and she maybe she's got just got a cold. Okay, that that is definitely a possibility. Also, grass pollen is very high here. She could be having an attack from uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 you know, allergies. So uh, I then, okay, have an appointment on Monday with my doctor, but he won't see me if I think I have any symptoms of COVID. So I hope I don't catch the cold from Marjorie. So I'm sitting here every minute waiting for a cold to start. And I'm also walking around the house whenever she's near me wearing this, okay? So, oh man, if it isn't one thing, it's another, you know? Now, how do you like our new background? Now, I went and shot this last night, and I still noticed some problems with it. But um, you see, over uh, over there, you see, right there, you got my uh, our fireplace. We have a fireplace. We don't only have a fireplace there. On the other side, you go through this e exit here, and you get into our dining room. Okay, and um, um, it's uh, you go in the dining room. Uh, on the other side, there's another another fireplace, okay? And then you get this wonderful view of my windows here, and uh, the, uh, let me let me just get here, see? Uh, and, and you can see out our windows, you can see the whole skyline of Manhattan is out there. Uh, the, that's a real, honest to goodness, skyline. I didn't Photoshop that or anything like that. And uh, what else do I have to show you? Well, that's about it. The big problem I have is I'm trying to shoot uh, shoot the window and not have the reflection in it, so that I could get like a really. But and I tried putting a Polaroid polarizing filter over my iPhone, which it was shot with, but that doesn't seem to cut it. So I may have to go to a photo store and get a uh, a little filter uh, new, uh, to uh, uh, do away with reflections. I can't remember what what you get. Maybe maybe Phil would like to write me and tell me. Uh, what it is, but anyway. So that's my that's our adventures for today, uh, and I didn't take the COVID test because I figured if she didn't have it, then why should I take it? Uh, but uh, it is it is confusing, you know. And uh, this is amazing. What what is this? I'm, I'm I have a problem. Uh, can I do something here, folks? While we. Uh, while we we deal with this hold on a second i see there we are i have a problem if you notice here okay with uh, my um um what do you call it 
uh, my um, it's my uh, thing. My uh, it, it, there's a there's a if you look there's a little uh, wait a minute or is that I can't figure out. Oh wait a minute. No, that's uh, that's the uh, that's the uh, huh? Why am I? Why have I got that there? That's not a problem. I see. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, there's that. Okay, so that's okay. The camera uh, is. I need. Uh, I need to do something with the uh, with the filters here. Uh, because I've got a filter that it just isn't working right you know I can make myself kind of disappear and there we go there we do that and then maybe we do that okay let me see here is there you no know, that's still got problems yeah I'm trying to a spill okay here we go there we go I think that's better isn't it okay is it better I don't know if it's better or not I can't tell I can oh yeah I well we seem to have uh, solved the problem a bit but I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and see if I can now you see there's a problem there there's a problem there uh, contrast um, I want to do that. I, you know, I can't. I, I, I just, I just don't know what it is. But the problem is, it's a little better. It's a little better. So, we'll, we'll just. Uh, and let me see. If I were to, uh, if I were to open up my uh, light a little more, would it go away? See, there it is. It's, it's there. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Does it go away? Okay. No, and nothing. I don't. I don't see it now. Uh, there, it should go away. But we'll see here. Let me see. Let me bring up the lights more. Let me see if I brought the lights up more. I, it just. It's strange. I don't get it. It's horrible. I can't. Uh, I can't figure out why this isn't working right. But it is working right. It looks fine over there, but it doesn't look fine on online. There we go. There we go. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. I'm trying to fix things up here. This has been a week of experimentation, you know. But I think we're okay now. No, there it goes again. Starting to get, starting to get it, uh, starting to get more. Hold on a second. I'm going to try one more time here to pr improve this. Uh, let me see here. Let me do this. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, all right, that's better. I think that's not a problem now. Okay, there we go. Okay, folks. See, I mean, this is, this is what we've had to go through every night on this program. I've had to try and solve problems. And you know, every time I do, the numbers go up. That's the other situation. Okay, well, I think, uh, I think we're, we're okay now. Yeah, we're we're fine. I got a little green here, but I think it's because I'm wearing this red shirt. I got to stop doing that. Um, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll worry about. It. I'll I'll worry about it tomorrow. I'll solve it while I'm not on the air instead of when I'm on the air. Okay, all righty. Anyway, uh, let me see. Let me admit some people here. There's only a few of them, so I don't know if we're gonna, you know, have much of a show tonight, but. We'll, we'll try. Uh, let me see here. Uh, and we go here, and Kevin's uh, uh, come in here. So let's bring in Kevin. All right. There you go. There's Kevin. And um, uh, we'll see here. Uh, who do we have? Uh, oh, I got it. Yeah, no, we've got all our people in there. All right. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Well, yeah. I mean, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, and well, hey, what, I, what is that tattoo again, uh, Brian? Because uh, it's a burrito. That's I love Alex Bennett. Oh, I see. <laughs> what is that? That's uh, my Cadillac. Cadillac. Well, why now? Why did you do that? 
you know, of all the things. I, I, I only did this like 10 years ago because if I would have done it when tattoos were in, I'd have Van Halen all over my chest by now. Yeah, but I, it just doesn't make it doesn't make a lot of sense, you Phil, know. Phil told me you have a uh, tattoo on your penis that says "Welcome aboard." Anybody want to laugh at that? Okay. L- laugh if you want to. No, let him explain it first. Y- yeah, well, let him explain it first. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, well, you know, if you have to. Exp- God, this is a hard show. What? This is a hard show for comedy. What do you mean for comedy? What are you What are you saying? You think you're funny? <laughs> you're assuming Jeff, you're that Jeff of all the ego, lot, of all laughed. the ego blasts, you even, even once in a while you laugh. I I heard you talk about your electrolytes. That's good news. <clears throat> well, I feel a lot more peppy, you know. And I don't know if maybe it's not the electrolytes, but I think it's the electrolytes. Okay. But in any event, it's okay, you know. I have my opinions about being Dutch myself. Hmm? So then, it, yeah. it, electrolytes, when you take them in, it usually takes uh, five mm-hmm. or six days for them to get up to. Now, do we know who Steve Fox is? Uh, I'm going to try. Well, we'll Isn't try. That, we'll try. That, uh, seven-year-old that was... Oh, they're all there, of course. I remember oh, yeah. Steve now. There we go. Yeah. Hi, Steve. How you doing? Hey, doing... <laughs> I could be doing better, but... Uh, what do you mean you could be doing better? What's wrong? Well, can, can't you tell? No. What, um, <laughs> Wednesday, I tested positive. <laughs> and I was just listening to your story just a second ago and um, about uh, Marjorie mm-hmm. and what's going on there. And <laughs> if I were you, I'd get tested. Um, what do you mean? She, we te- I tested her. Oh, no, no, you. Oh, well, me? No, I don't need to because I don't have any symptoms. Oh, well. I mean, if, if, I got sim- if I got <laughs> symptoms, I would try it. I mean, I think I would probably come out negative as well because she's negative and I haven't you know, been with anybody who might possibly have it. So probably I caught her cold. But yes, mm-hmm. I would do the test, but I don't see, I don't want to waste a test now if I don't have symptoms. Yeah, you know, Adrian had a cough for like a week and a half too, and I tested her like every day because she had dance and and all this stuff, and I kept telling her teacher last week of, I have a bigger stack, my stack. Do is you? Big. How big is your stack? Uh, oh yeah. Kaiser keeps sending me every week. Well, you, well, you know no, something. I, I, more now. Uh, the, uh, if, it, it, I'll tell you, it's not an easy test to do with the first oh. time. You, the first time you're right. Oh, and then also, you know what they say on the box? Try it on one of those boxes. Have you got your iPhone with you, Alan? Yeah. Okay, that particular box, it says, see there's a there's a, a QR code on the back? Yes. Okay, yes. it says, click on the QR code, and it will take you to a site to show you how to do it. Click on the QR code. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, t- get your QR reader out. All right. Go to the it's QR a, code. It's got a bunch of numbers. Data. Yeah, it is no, it, nothing. 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 Yeah, I did that once before. I thought maybe they updated it. That's uh, not Safia product. Sorry. It, Can't it, account. It, what? Oh, okay. All right. It sends you over <laughs> to the company that Brian works the, for. <laughs> but we got, uh, we got us, uh, we had another version mm-hmm. of this thing. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good, you know. So, uh, so we, 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 Finally, once I did it once, the next time I didn't even need the instructions. You know, I knew how to do it. Did you do it? Did you self-administer your your test, uh, Steve, or did you go somewhere? Uh, I did self-administer, and also uh, I did go to the school district over here, and that's where I got the uh, the deadly results. And it took uh, three days because it was Sunday night that I felt some of the symptoms that are coming on the sore throat. Monday, I did the tests, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. And then finally, Wednesday, it came out positive. So then I went on uh, Paxlovid. That stuff is just amazing. I mean, um, I felt like crap yesterday. Well, how'd, you get, uh, how'd you get the Paxlovid? You go to your doctor. They, they will go ahead and administer it to you. Mm-hmm. And um, you tell them that, you know, you have to be, I think it's... Uh, less than five days uh, since you've tested positive that uh, 
Yeah, but you but you in. have to go to your doctor to do this, right? Not here. No, we do, no. We do uh, test to treat here, and if you yep. come up positive, they hand it to you right away. Who hands yeah. it to you? The testers. Uh, CBS. Yeah, they do it down here. It's called test to treat. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. We're one of the only counties doing it right now. Or we're we were only one of the counties doing it. Alameda County's doing it too right now. Are they? Yeah. 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 But I mean I uh, um uh, you know Sorry, I mean, I didn't so you, you were testing no, no. you were testing you were testing negative for two days or something like that? Yeah. Or? It was uh two to three days and in the third day that's when it just I mean it was Wednesday that it hit. Yeah. Uh, because I had a fever and everything that morning, and I thought, oh gosh. And so I went down, got tested, and all of a sudden, positive. And then well, I called I called my doctor's office and said, you know, we uh, I don't know, but Marjorie might have COVID. You know, I mean, we did the test and it's fine, but uh, who knows, right? And I said, could the doctor, if I can, if I get it, well, can I call the doctor and get a prescription? All right. Mm -hmm. And and she said to me, "No, you have to come down and see the doctor." Okay. What a hassle. Yeah, yeah and and I'm shit. thinking, I'm thinking, okay. Now they got a thing on their phone that says, "If you have COVID symptoms, don't come to our office." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So if I can't come to your office, how am I going to get you to write me a prescription for this stuff? Yeah. Okay. In the parking lot. Huh. In the parking lot. I have no idea. I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Well, I'm convinced that I have some kind of antibodies because I went to the Dead concert on Tuesday. I haven't gotten it by now. I ain't going to get it. <laughs> well, you know, I mean. Were those, were those antigen tests? All the tests you took? No no PCR? Oh, for me? Yeah, Steve. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ant antigen, yeah. All the antigen? Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's typical. Yeah, Imagine, but that's yeah, but you know, they have to wait three days for a result. I mean, by yeah, that, that's the problem. By, yeah. By then, you don't. You know, when when do you go to that doctor? And by the way, I'm just wondering, could my could I go to CVS and say, hey, I have COVID. Can you want to test me? Make sure I have it, and then give me a prescription. Can they do it? I don't know. I don't. You're in don't a big city. You know, none of this makes sense. I mean, if you got five days to get that stuff, then like my doctor, let's see if I get it. My doctor isn't hoping until Monday. And I'm supposed to see him anyway. Well, but, the other thing is, is that, you know, my doctor said, we'll get it to you and it's an emergency. So we'll get it to you that night and they'll ship it over to you. Yeah. Um, but it, what ended up happening, the pharmacy called up and said, do you have a family member or anybody that could go down and, and get it for you? And I said, yeah, do you want their name? No, which I thought was strange. So, in other I'm words, your doctor, your, your doc, you just with a call to your doctor, he could call into the pharmacy and get you this stuff. Yeah. My doctor, they said I got to go down there, I got to go see him. And <laughs> that's it, strange. That doesn't make sense to me. That's weird. Yeah. Let me get everybody in the doctor sick too. Wow. Well, then the doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. You know. So. I wonder about that. So the FDA, Dr. Allen here, that's not a doctor. The FDA put out a a thing recently on the on the antivirals that that uh, Steve's taken, and they're they're not going to be giving them to just anybody. They're going to be giving them to people that are high risk now. <clears throat> Rather, you know, comorbidities, asthma, you know, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, or or due to age, sixty and older. That's so, it. Uh, did yeah. you, did you have Steve? Did you uh, you had you, you, you took you gave yourself the test? I mean, what oh yeah, have you gotten the shots and everything, the vaccines? All the way through, yeah. Really? Um, it's yeah, I'm completely vaxxed. So so how boosters. bad were your symptoms before you started taking the pills? <laughs> um, I think I got it worse than a lot of other people because I it was a sore throat, then it went from the sore throat down and um, then it turned into a small cough and then all of a sudden my whole head was just, I mean, the sinuses were going crazy. Um, just couldn't sleep, couldn't even function. And then all of a sudden the fever came along. 
all this time I was testing negative and I, I was at work. I was real smart. And um, and so somebody else, I'm sure somebody else at the station got it too because mm -hmm. I saw the email. Um, yeah. And um, then the next thing I had was I was in the studio and it was colder than anything. I was getting chills. And so I turned on the heater and um, drove home at 80 degrees in the car. And then that was it. The next thing I full-blown fever came out and you know mm -hmm. i was miserable for probably up until i got those pills and how fast do the pills take care of it i'm feeling i mean <laughs> really i mean it was only been a uh, i took it well this i mean this gets me why did why did this, this nurse say he, i mean he should be able to just go oh you got you got covid uh, uh I'll, I'll put in a thing for you in fact why does he even need to see me to make sure I've got COVID? Just give me the medicine in case I do. You know, I don't the think laws it's in New York different. I don't I mean, think I don't think that taking this pill right is going to be that egregious if you don't have it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you could take it. What does they call it? Uh, uh, prophylactically. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, but I don't know. I guess I could probably call my urologist and say, "Can you order this up for me?" You know. Yeah. What you're going? No. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I was. Somebody else said something. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Do. Yeah. He probably could. He's a medical doctor. Why couldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you like your urologist, so he's got one patient that likes him. Do something nice. Write your prescription for it. You should have it at home. Yeah. Yeah. You probably you could say to him, due to your age, mm -hmm. uh, that you would like to have one at home in case you test positive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the and, government's paying for them. Your health care. That's it. You know, yeah. your health care is not paying for the meds. It's it's on, uh, uh, it's on the government. emergency use authorization right now, and the government's yeah. paying for it. Wow. I think I think it'd be a good idea for somebody that's older. You know, like any of us probably. Well, the only thing that really worries me is not so much. I have an appointment with the doctor anyway on Monday. I'll go down and see him. I don't care if it says, you know, if you've got COVID, don't come see us. But how do I? Oh, well, I give up. You know, I give up <laughs> Just on the go whole. see the doctor, wear a mask, you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, but if he'll see me, but he, I don't know. I, I don't get any of this, okay? Why um, is it different? I'm just curious. Why is it different in New York where here you have to, uh, you know, They'll see you on a video chat, yep. but I yep. don't understand why you have to go in. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's a good point. What's the name of that drug, by the way? Paxlovid. Paxlovid? Yeah, P-A-X. P-A-X-L-I-D. Oh, wait a minute. Pax, P-A-X-L-I-L-A-V-I-D. What? What? Paxlovid. Yeah. Lovid. Hello. Pat's Lovid. Okay, so let me see. Here. By Pfizer. Get prescriptions online. Refill or a news prescription at pharmacy in 15 minutes. Oh. No. Uh, let me see here. But I bet they want to charge you for it. It's an ad. That's what it is. Pat's Lovid. Uh, 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 is it antivirals? Bad taste? Uh, um, okay, fact sheet for healthcare providers. What you need to know about? Well, I'll go look it up later and see. But uh, no, because somebody up here is trying to sell a thing where it goes get prescriptions online, and you go get your prescription online, request now, and I'll bet that they charge you for it, right? Uh, we accept these insurance that. plans and many more. Now, how do you know you're really getting the drug? Well, it, 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 you're going to get it through a, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, oh, yeah. a pharmacy. So, you know, but uh, anyway, well, who knows? I may not even need it. So what, am, see, here I am worrying about something before it ever happened, right? It's just the way I am. It's how I, uh, it's how I, how I, how I um, uh, swing. Well, what? Be careful how much you come on the show. <laughs> Because just about everybody on the show ends up with prostate cancer. Oh, God. <laughs> well, no, I had prostate uh, cancer. I Phil had prostate cancer. Yeah. Tony, I, you have prostate Tony cancer? 
You know, you're huh? right about the urologist. Huh? <laughs> he said it's super low risk. You know, you call me. Everybody's been telling you what, that. What, what's super low risk? Uh, my Gleason score is the lowest he said I can have. Prostate. What was it again? Three, three. plus three. Three plus three? That's the lowest Gleason score. Yeah. What about the Carney score? Oh, I forgot. He didn't tell me that. No, there's a Carney score, you know. What is it? He was telling me it's super low. I was looking at my file. He's believing me. <laughs> he doesn't even get the joke. Oh, this I is the that, guy I that decided. My, my drug file here. This is the guy that yesterday decided that he's going to vote for Trump. He's conferring to be a Trump. <laughs> That's fitting right in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Call call Trump. He'll he'll prescribe it for you. Yeah. yeah he'll take care of it. He'll you. send you a new prostate. <laughs> Don't answer, Tony. Don't answer. He <laughs> he just wants ten dollars. <laughs> <It wasn't okay. laughs> Jeff, you're funny. Send him ten dollars. He'll send you a new prostate. Yeah. New Newsom keeps texting me. Kevin, you getting texts from Newsom? Really? No. No, yeah, they keep texting me asking for, oh, now that we've done it, we just need five or ten dollars from you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. The joy of being independent. Mm. Yeah, go to French laundry with that money. Is <laughs> uh, uh, Have you had your primaries already? In, uh, out in California? Where, where, yeah. where are you? Yeah, yeah, last week. You're so in cool. California too, right, Steve? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember I worked him last week. Oh, oh, look. She's grown up. He's a radio personality in the Bay She's area. almost an adult now. Don't tell her that, please. I have one 16 year old who thinks he's an adult, thinks he knows better than me, so we're going to be yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me herd this one up and get her out of here. Well, if she wants to stick around, you know, we, yeah, just, well, we just won't say anything filthy. Say. No, that's okay. She wants to go swimming, and it's cold. Okay, bye. I want to go in the hot tub. Hot tub. Okay, bye. Okay, let me let me throw her out of my room. Throw her in the hot tub. <laughs> bye. Goodbye, Adrian. Bye, Adrian. <laughs> Actually, keep Adrian here, and you leave. No. <laughs> yeah. She's kind of like a ventriloquist dummy, isn't she? She he just picks her up and you know. But uh, anyway, so I, you know, I mean, uh, all, all these little things like, uh, uh, you know, I, so I don't want to get COVID, you know. So. I don't want it either. Yeah, I mean, I'm 82 years old, but keep, I keep keep wearing a mask when you're yeah. in crowds and keep getting your shots. Oh, I have all my shots. Yep. So I even I got this temper to just make sure, you know. <laughs> Ooh. What was oh, that? That was, a, that was a strange noise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Kevin anyway. needs a new pickup truck. Somebody yeah. just backed into it. <laughs> now, what station do you work at, Steve? Or can you say? Yeah. Uh, KQED mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Yeah. Well, I guess we've both taken checks from KQED then. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you, do the yeah. Radio, you do the radio side, right? Yeah. Your wife backed into your pickup, Kevin? No, just another Impala over there trying to blow up. By the way, what kind of uh, reaction to the Warriors game? What? <laughs> there she is again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <stop>. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing her hoochie coochie dance. You bet. Yeah. They just did their recital last week, so she's still on that high. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's pretty cool because they did it at the, the Hammer Theater downtown San Jose. So it was like the big mm -hmm. stage, big stage, you know. So yeah. it was nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, she's a, she's a, she's a, I just watch out for her. Keep a baseball bat by the door when she starts getting into her teens, you know. So when guys come to pick her up, you, th <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> Everybody left the house, so she, it's just her and I, so she says she's afraid, so I said, okay, she can draw in the background, but she can't listen or disturb us. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I'm a good GM up. product, Kevin. What's going on out there, Kevin? Yeah. Kevin? What's, what, now what is she bringing in? Huh? It's her chair. Her chair. Her chair? Yeah, her chair. She's, she's coughing. 
Oh yeah, she there you go. She had a cough for about a week and a half, and it was like the last week of school. So I tested her every day, and I kept having to. She'd go to the nurse, so the nurse would call. You know, I say, oh, now she's just acting. There's like, a there's a bad cold going around the Bay Area. Phil had it, and if Phil had it, everybody got it. <laughs> see, somebody laughs at my stuff. Well, you, see, well, you see, I have to go to my doctor on Monday to get him to take a look at the results of all the tests that I was given when I was in the emergency room, and uh, and I want him to, you know, I want him to just see what it's all about, you know, see, make sure I'm okay. Uh, but if I come down with something, then I can't see him. And I, even if I have a cold, I don't think he'll want to see me in this, you know, COVID life that we lead. But um, so well, to, I got a question for yeah, you. So sure. what happened to you? You said you fell. And... It, no, it, it, I I woke up in the middle of the night. Uh, I don't want to go through the. I'll give the, the really short thing because everybody here has heard it, and I don't want to bore them. Uh, although I do bore them every night, but uh, uh, no, I, in the middle of the night, I uh, I suddenly felt very nauseous. I was sweating. The bed was soaked. I was sweating. I felt like I had to throw up. I raised my head. It, I was got so dizzy. I couldn't lift my head because I didn't want to do that and throw up. And finally, after a while, I decided I got to get to the bathroom and go for the go for the sink and you know see if i can hurl because i'm not much of a hurler and i went and uh, went in the bathroom stumbled into the bathroom hit my head on the basin the sink oh. fell back on the floor now i'm lying on my back like you know a, a dying turtle uh and it it ju was just it was it, you know it was terrible the marjorie came in tried to help me get up i then as soon as i lift my head i get really nauseous and everything and finally, she tried to lift me up, and I couldn't get up. And uh, she called an ambulance, and we went off to the emergency room where I spent the next 14 hours taking every possible test you can get except for a finger up my ass. Oh, God. You know? The only enjoyable test for you. And what they came out after scanning my whole body with CT scans, both the two of them, one for my neck and head area, mm -hmm. and then my whole body because they found some enlarged lymph nodes, which could have well been from whatever happened to me, pu puking and sweating and all of that, right? And, and then she says to me, well, you gotta do the rest of the body, make sure you don't have cancer. So then they do the rest of my body and they don't find anything. It, 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 everything looks great. Then they do my heart, like echocardiogram. I mean, one test after another. I think we. I think that day we spent twenty thousand dollars in the emergency room. Oh my God. Yeah, you know. And uh, so what I got to go to the doctor about is this uh, PA, which is not a doctor. She's the physician's assistant. Okay. Says to me, well, I think you better go over and uh, get checked out by a hematologist slash oncologist down the street at the cancer center. So I call them up and I say, I want to see a doctor. And they say, about what? I said, well, this doctor recommended that I call you. And they said, what's the problem? And I told them, blah, 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 blah. And uh, they said, well, we'll look at your blood records. We'll look at your records and then we'll get back to you. So they look at my records and they say, there's nothing wrong with your blood. We can't see you unless you have a bi biopsy that says you've got cancer. You, you can't come see us. So I'm going, oh, geez, you know, so go to your p p regular physician and uh, just have him look at it and see what he thinks, you know. So that's what I'm doing on Monday, just oh. going to my, my physician so he can look at it and probably feel here and go, well, I, they're okay now or whatever, you know. It's just, but I mean, it's just, it's just it, it, was, it was a horrid situation, just, huh. you know. But you're doing okay now. Oh, I'm doing fine. And the best part is we are so fully insured that it won't cost me a penny. Good. Although I'm saying that knock on wood because somehow they'll figure out a way to charge me for something. But God. what I love is that every time, like for instance, they said, um, you need an aspirin? Yes. Okay. And they hold up the aspirin. It's in a packet, right? And they then take their iPhone and they scan it. Hmm. They scan everything. 
Why are they scanning it? It goes on the bill. Bill. Mm. You know, I mean, it, it, they can't just give you an aspirin and say compliments of the house. After all, the, you're going to spend twenty thousand dollars for the CT scans and the electrocardiograms and the blood tests and all the other things they did. Uh, you know, so I, I just. I give up. That's crazy. Oh, you having a uh, you having a uh, keto bar there, right, Brian? Yeah. So this is my last one. So you know what tomorrow is? Go to Costco. Tomorrow's Costco day. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> we, we ha I always have two boxes in the house, just so I never run out. And we're down to one box now, so I have to order another box yeah. from Costco. Bob Berry, sixty calories. Yeah. Keto no keto bar. No carbs, two They're carbs. Made by Weight Watchers. What They're two? Pretty good. Well, you got yeah. everybody eating here. Yeah, well, this now is. I figured I can go get one. This is. I'll go get one. Okay, go get, go get, go. Everybody, if you can get a dessert, go get it if you want it. Damn, what a clean bedroom. Do you have any in your house, Tony? Uh, I got. I don't have anything up here. I have some snacks. I got cereal. Go have a cup of coffee, Tony. Oh yeah, I got coffee too. Oh, yeah. I can get a nice coffee. I have to go downstairs right now. Well, you know I what? Just, I, I just got a coffee maker, and I just started making coffee because my drive's to Lodi in the morning now. So, yeah. can you make it in your car? No, I can drink it in my car. <clears throat> I make it the night before. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I just pour some the coffee stuff in there and some water, and yeah, come, I don't know if it's too strong or what. But. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Cheers. It, it, it oh, is. Yeah. Uh, where are we here? Uh, would second. you like me to get you one, Jeff? I'll go get you one, too. Uh, I got the same thing. I'm yeah. trying to cut down. Mm -hmm. where, where is it? The COVID popsicle. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hmm, I so you're on the radio on KQED? What do you do on the radio? I just talk or. Yeah, I'm an announcer on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have a voice for it. Your voice. Oh, yeah. Your voice is like dead on to someone you hear. It's got deep voice, very good, clear voice. I mean, do you do any programs or are you just an announcer? Just, you know. I'm an announcer on the station. Um, I was on a couple of stations out here in the East Bay. I got out of there. Um, and uh, mainly music radio is what I've been doing, you know, for the majority of my career. But I'm stuck at KQ. And not, I shouldn't say stuck. I'm enjoying my life at KQED. And, yeah, uh, you know it's fantastic. I can't say anything bad about it at all. It's so. been a good experience for you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Then I got the. Uh, I think I told you about this before. I've got the online station too, and uh, Steve Fox's old school is what it's called. Yeah, and um, it's basically R and B from the '60s to the '90s. Now wait a minute. Are you doing that privately? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, my own. how are you paying for licensing the music? Uh, I get raped every month. Um, <laughs> you know, I pay every month for it. So, really, um, yeah, I shouldn't. Well, how can I put it? It's written off as my business. Okay, so, no, I mean you can do that. You can yeah. do that. But my, it's nice to get a loss sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah. But my question is, how much are they charging you for that? Because today, to this day, it's pretty expensive. It is. Um, I mean, for. A silly online station. Uh, it's for me. Um, I got in early on a deal. I guess I grandfathered in <clears throat> because it's tune in live three sixty five. Oh, I see. You're doing going through the live three sixty five deal. Yeah. Yeah. And well, then yeah. I, I heart came in and a bunch of other things too. And, um, and I've already been grandfathered into iTunes, and so it's uh, it comes out to about three hundred. It's like 350 a month yeah yeah so that's now is that piece. without being able to run commercials or can you run commercials with that? i could run commercials yeah you can but I, I don't want to but i mean i should my accountant says yeah you need to do something to prove that you're making some kind of money out of this thing because and somehow i did last year so yeah well i you know you, 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 yeah otherwise you have to say it's a hobby Right. Yeah. Well, you know what got me is that, they, in case people don't know, all music that you play 
you can't just willy-nilly play music on the internet. You have to pay for it or go through mm-hmm. some system like 365 that has part of royal, royalties being taken care of as part of your relationship with 365, okay? Right. Uh-huh. Um, but somehow you have to pay for the music. And the, the people who handle the music, BMI, ASCAP, and I think CSAC is still around, uh, they uh, have never come up with a system for people like myself, who is, I'm basically non-commercial, okay? I, I don't run commercials, but maybe I'd like to play some music. There's no kind of, they never came up with something where you just, you know, it was, it was reasonable. It's still five, six hundred dollars a year if you, you know, you want to play just any kind of music. I mean, I, I pay for my music that I play, but it's for production stuff. I pay for production music. And so, what about your uh, opening theme? That opening theme is part of the production music I pay for. Oh, okay. And once I pay for it and use it, and once I, uh, I, it, it's. Uh, 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 it's called story blocks it used to be called something else and uh, I, uh, um, I I do it and uh, if you use it if you download the song right I can continue to use that forever oh yeah uh, and and uh, so that music like this for instance this thing which is my closing music you know yeah, it's part of the package, you know, that I pay for. And I pay about 160 bucks a year for the music. And then I have videos that I use, like in promos and on the li- online and so on and so forth. And I buy the, uh, the video package, too, which is about another $150 a year. But that's, that's hmm. reasonable, but I can't play music like you're playing music you know i don't if i did a show and said okay well let's do a show using nothing but the music i purchased with this you know production music system it it would just be the dullest show you ever heard you know (laughs) because the probably the best piece of music you'll hear on that station will be you know (laughs) you know uh so it it, but it, it you know um but I, I I would love to play music, you know, uh, but I can't. There was a time, I mean, years ago, where I just used any music I wanted on videos and nobody complained about it. But now yeah, they're watching. They got their tentacles out. They're just waiting, you know. And uh, so, you know. Now, the voiceover person that you use, is that uh, someone from Gabnet? Or? That's a guy who uh, has been doing voiceovers for us since the very beginning oh wow uh, yeah and uh, oh, rob huh rob, 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 rob. rob hey, alfano the Ga- i miss rob the voice hey, of gabnet yeah well you know rob rob stopped calling for a very yeah, very good reason very good I reason know why why because he because he works and he didn't want to worry about exactly work. Mm-hmm. He, exactly i know i, I don't blame him you know, because you come on here and maybe you have some opinion about something, and the next thing you know, you got problems at work. Yeah. You know? And so he didn't want to take that risk. I mean, Brian, you wouldn't get in trouble for anything you're saying here, would you? No, but there's a lot of stuff that I know, you know, from our company that, you know, that I like to have input with, with you guys, but there's stuff that I just shouldn't talk about, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was real careful. I mean, they're going, like, you know, 50 of us to watch this show so nobody's on here. But still, you know, if we're in private, I see Kevin, I talk to him about stuff and, you know, but, you know, other stuff I'm pretty pretty neutral on because... Well, I'm 82, I don't worry about anything ruining, hurting my career, you know. Uh, you, what were you saying, Kevin? You were saying something there? Just when I was working, I, I didn't, I was pretty neutral too. But you, I changed a little bit once I retired. Yeah. Um, and Alan, do you work? No. Oh, okay. I'm totally retired. Okay. So, well. you know, and, uh, you know, I think you'd be probably a little careful about opinions on this show, Steve, you know, mm-hmm. because you don't want to have to get back to KQED. You know, you said something that didn't, uh, didn't we quite all play sign well. A waiver when we came up? No. What? Didn't we all sign a waiver? 
confidentiality when we came on the show. And, no. If you have to check that Alex gives us every week, then you know right. that, that, yeah. that's the waiver. Now, what is what is Adrian up to? She's up to something. Mm -hmm. She, she makes you something, and then when I want to show you, she doesn't want to let me show you. She makes me something. Yes. So I have a, a little few things to send you because she's like, can I show him? No. No. <laughs> no. no. She was back there. See her, see her, oops, all that. See her iPad right there? Yeah. See her iPad? So she goes on there, and she, she'll watch something, and they show. So I can't. I, I don't know if you can see this. Mm. I love you, Alex. What's and, and what's that? Me is the that devil. Cat? Is that me is no, the, the devil? Cat. Oh, I'm no, a cat. cat. Oh, oh, it's a wolf. Sorry, it's a wolf. Well, now it's you blew the surprise. There you go. That's a little bit better. That's a fox. It's a fox. It's a fox. Yeah. Hey, no, here, here's here's like hold, hold, hold it up to the camera a little closer so I can see it. You know, she's getting really good. She gets better every day, That's doesn't she? Look at her legs, the proportion, the leg, and the body, and yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. She gets that from me, of course. And she can talents. she can dance, she can draw. All her talents she gets from me. Really? I wife at home so I can say that loud in here. <laughs> so in other words, she's going to grow up and, and, and make testing machines. <laughs> no. I don't know. She's going to use dance to get as far education as she can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep her off the pole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Off the pole. I gotta keep you off the pole. Poo. No. <laughs> there is a fly in this room. You know. Well, anyway. So, um, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, um, um, yeah. So, it, I mean, people have to be careful. So, Rob has had to be very careful. I mean, he still will do some voiceovers for me when I need him. And I also use a, another guy too, Albert Reynoso, who was my producer at uh, Sirius XM. And, uh, you know, but um, how's everything? How, you still enjoying the Bay Area, Steve? How about all of you, actually? I love it. Because so everybody's from the Bay Area? Well, I'm from the Bay Area. Steve, you're from oh. the Bay Area. Alan's in the Bay Area. Brian is oh, in yeah. the Bay Area. Kevin's in the Bay Area. The only people here that are not in the Bay Area right now is Jeff. Right and Tony, and Alex. Who, if he opens his and mouth, you know, you know there's no way he's in San Francisco. Yeah, you know I am in the Bay Area. Yeah, <laughs> I liked it, but I, yeah, they knew I was. When I was in the hotel, me and my brother, I went down to get the paper and a coffee. The guy's like, "Are you from Brooklyn?" Wait a minute, wait a minute. Say, <laughs> what? What is that brown drink you were just mentioning? What is coffee. the? What is the? Oh, coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Coffee. That's how you pronounce it, folks. In New York, it's coffee. Yeah, uh, and 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 if you get coffee with uh, with cream, what's that called? What's that called? Milk. No. With milk. With milk, it's called. Believe it or not, New York City, regular. Oh, regular. I do. Regular. Regular coffee. You go down the store and get some gasoline. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you don't ask him how he how he pronounces Chinese restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't want that. <laughs> I have no regulations. Yeah, uh, but I mean, it, it really, it 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 uh, it's, it's it's something you think about. It, that, you know, that that, that 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 here in New York, if you want coffee with cream, you ask for regular, and if you don't want it with cream, you say black. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, whereas if I said regular in California, regular coffee, they go they hand you black coffee, right? You'd assume right. that. Mm -hmm. So that that's one of the first things I learned the first time I came to New York. And I said at that point I didn't drink coffee, so it didn't matter. <laughs> you know. What kind of coffee do you drink? I remember a long time ago you used to you used to talk about coffee. So I'm just getting into coffee here mm -hmm. to drive to work. Well, my newest little pleasure is a thing. Uh, they, there's a cream I use. I'm sure what it's called. Oh God, what is the name of it? I'd have to go and see what I ordered. But it, uh, I use a, a a a for my creamer. I use a non-caloric creamer, uh, and it's got all kinds of stuff in it. And it's good for you, and you know. And then they make a coffee now, 
and they have a mocha, and I really like it a lot. You know, it's kind of like I'm having uh, cocoa and coffee at the same time. So, hey, you know, we've managed to talk about nothing tonight. That's true. You know, absolutely nothing. Well, it's, you know. This Phil's not here. Well, no, I'm <laughs> please, if you say his name three times, he shows no, up. He'll show up. <laughs> Oh. It's kind of like be- it's kind of like Beetlejuice, you know. <laughs> Say his name three times. So, how long you been in radio, Steve? Oh my gosh, uh, got started in nineteen seventy eight. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, when you were four. I started in high school in nineteen fifty three. Really. Yeah, why don't I figure I'm not going into my 60th? Was this 60 years? Would that be 60 years? Yeah. Yeah. No. No, that's 70. 70 years. 70 years in broadcasting. Man. Is that is that horrible or what? It's amazing the skin isn't rotting off my, off my hand here. Well, you've had yeah. quite a career. I mean, all the way through. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, you know, it was okay. It was okay. You know, ah. it, it, you, you know. I mean, it's not. You know what it is. You never perceive it's that good. You know, yeah. I mean, I would imagine that even a guy like David Letterman went. Well, my career was okay. You know, because you never perceive yourself as having a great career, <laughs> because you simply fight to stay alive in this business. Well, yeah, and, you're right. You know. Uh, I've never, I've never had it really easy. I mean, I think I had it easy at Sirius XM while I was there. You know, it was never, a, never an unpleasant experience. Uh, but at the end, it was an unpleasant experience. But not during the whole thing, really. So, you know. So when you were at Sirius, were mm-hmm. you going into their studios or? Oh yeah, yeah. I went in every morning. You oh. know, walked into okay. a studio and sat there and did the show. Yeah, but now, I mean, I imagine today if I were doing it, I'd probably be doing it from here. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, because all that has kind of changed. Do you physically go into KQED? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can't do it from home. Anyway. Unfortunately, no. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of interesting because ever since I tested positive, mm-hmm. I got emails that came in and said, others have. So Yeah. Um, it's going gangbusters over here. Yeah, so so KQED is just deluged with COVID. Well, not only them, but uh, it goes along with a bunch of other places too. Yeah, uh, and it's just it's it's very common right now. What's going on? I don't know. Part of, the, part of the problem is the new variants, as I've read, since I'm not a doctor, are are bypassing some of the uh, protection we have. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, listen. There's the music, folks. The music I pay good money for, okay? <laughs> we love it. You know? And uh, uh, and Jeff, you have not said a word tonight, I don't think. Or did you? Yeah, I did say something. You did say something. Important. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We just like you up there, you know? What is that that Kevin is doing? <laughs> it's a receipt from CVS for one nasal spray. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, anyway. I think it's almost three feet long. Alan, thank you so much. It's Sweetie. all the coupons. Appreciate, appreciate you. Yeah, it's all coupons. Yeah. Have a good weekend, uh, everybody. Brian Stay Neary, straight. thank you. And thank you, Adrian. 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 Yeah. Say goodnight. Good night. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Kevin, great to see you again. Steve, please come see us again. We love having you here. Do. If you come, need a voice for anything, let me know. I think uh, <laughs> I might. Send me an email, okay, to alex at gabnet.net and let me know how I can get a hold of you. All right? Okay. okay. Sounds good. And Tony, hey, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Okay, anyway, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave uh, goodbye at you, okay? All right? All right, there we go. And cut to Alex. Here I am. Yeah. That's it for tonight. That's it for the week. We'll see you on Monday. We're going to be back here for the um, uh, pop-up show on Monday, 
uh, at uh, let's see here at uh, four o'clock on it's on Facebook. Okay, so that's uh, on Monday, and then we'll see you right back here again on uh, Wednesday at uh, ten thirty Eastern Daylight Time. Or yes, Eastern Daylight is Eastern Daylight, isn't it? Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, please tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.